sec. Hello, internet fans. It's your old pal Rotten Roger DeMarco here from RepulsiveReviews.com. This week, we're going to talk about Buddy Cooper's 1985 film, The Mutilator, otherwise known as Fall Break. When the leaves of summer turn to red and gold and the football games bring a hint of the cold time to get away. We'll pack the car with escape in mind for getting out. But before we get into the meat of the review, first, let's check out Ryan Rogers' Splatter Facts. First, we have seven dead bodies. We have two titties. The methods of death include, but are not limited to, shotgun, gaff to the lady parts, beheading, and a pitchfork to the neck. <laughs> as far as the plot goes, here's the rundown. When Ed was a little kid, he decided he would do a special treat for his dad's birthday. He was gonna clean his dad's guns. Well, his dad's a fucking idiot and left the guns loaded. So, while little Ed is cleaning the guns, he accidentally murders his own mom. Yep, that happens. So then, after that, you can imagine, Ed and his dad, Big Ed, they ain't exactly cool. However, like 15 years later, Ed is in college and he's on fall break. Him and his friends are looking for something to do. Ed gets a call from Big Ed. He wants his son to winterize the old family beach home. How much winterizing does a beach house need? I don't know. The point is, they go there so Ed's father, Big Ed, can finally murder his son because he's so damn mad at him. Let's talk a little bit about the production of The Mutilator. Buddy Cooper had $86,000 and he couldn't decide if he wanted to open up a vineyard in France or make a movie. Lucky for the slasher fans, he decided to make a movie. Although had he uh, done the vineyard thing, he might still be making some money. He actually made this movie with no experience. No film school, nothing. He went to film school after he finished the movie because that's how you do it. He took a screenwriting class for three weeks and his assignment was write a script. He wrote The Mutilator and I guess he figured three weeks of school is all I need. I got some money, let's make a movie. That's how you do it. Now Buddy Cooper and his father were sort of local celebrities because Buddy Cooper's dad owned the Oceana Resort which they ended up using for the central location of the film so that didn't cost them very much money and they were able to house the entire cast and crew right there. So that's pretty sweet. Also since they were local celebrities the mayor, the police chief, and all the locals helped film the movie. You want the street blocked off? No problem. You want a helicopter shot? No problem. You want a bunch of college kids in the shot? No problem. I mean, this town took care of this movie. They also hired Mark Showstrom, the famous effects artist who was known for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Evil Dead 2, and Dick Tracy along with uh, Dick Smith. Dick Smith helped. And they basically planned for the effects to be the big showpiece of the movie because that's why people watch splatter movies is for the gross effects. They had big effects planned and unfortunately while they were filming, like always, things don't work out like they planned. So some of the effects were drastically cut back due to uh, technical difficulties with the liquid latex or the prosthetics, whatever. Surprisingly, the MPAA still went after them pretty heavy even though some of the effects had been tamed down. Now for the famous swimming pool scene, they needed the swimming pool to be not so transparent. So what could they do? They dumped milk in the swimming pool. That seems reasonable. They dumped a shit ton of milk in so the water, so you couldn't see through the water. And it took nearly four days to get the milk out of the pool. Four goddamn days. It's ridiculous. Big Ed is a trophy hunter, as evidence of all the heads he's got stuffed around the house. He also accidentally ran over a guy with a speedboat, took a picture of it, and framed it, and hung it on his wall. I'm wondering why Little Ed never quite figured out that his dad was planning to murder him. Seriously. He had a picture of a guy he killed on his wall. Yeah, he seems like he's all there. This movie taught me one valuable lesson that I never thought I would know. Chlorine prevents herpes. What's wrong with the water? It looks like it's been loaded down with chlorine. Will that hurt you? 
No, in fact, it probably prevents herpes. Maury Lampley, the actor who played Mike, is essentially the worst actor of all time. And uh, you can't fully appreciate it unless you see his uh, stellar performance with his death scene. Not to mention this film has, yet again, my favorite Scooby-Doo-esque slasher movie trope ever. The old let's split up. I'm gonna give this movie 2.5 battle axes out of 5. Because it's not very good, but it's not the worst slasher I've ever seen either. You should probably check it out. There's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's gotta watch them. So why not me, right?